This video contains subject matter that may be offensive and disturbing to some people. If you are the type to require a warning throughout a video or show, let this message serve as your warning. This channel discusses the harsh reality of true crime. If this warning is not sufficient for you, consider a different genre and unsubscribe from my channel immediately. Hello, how's it going? <laughs> yeah, and when you, if you guys send me a request on something, don't hound me about it. I'll do something when I feel like doing it, okay? Thank you. I don't need you to ask me, hey, are you gonna, you know, just don't do it. Okay? It actually kind of puts me in a shitty mood. If you send me a, uh, some something, I'll do it when I do it, not when you want me to do it. Okay? All right, here we go. All right, here we go, here we go. Oh, look at that. There's a non and non. Any updates on the, uh, the Georgia golf course shooting? Anything like that? Any uh, reasoning? I haven't looked into that since then. Any, any uh, information? No updates, huh? All right. Okay, so there's there's another case that I'm working on. Uh, it's the Blake Chapel case. I interviewed the mother today, but uh, you know we were did it already did it for um, gosh like an hour and twenty minutes, and then we got disconnected, and then she had to do something. So, and we were we we're just like halfway through. Okay, so. When it gets done, it'll get done, all right? Not when you want me to do it. So, um, you know, we're, we're doing the interviewing. And then I'll play it all. She, it's really a really pretty crazy case. All right. Yeah, can't stand when I get, when I get emails like that, I almost just wanna, just, ah, drives me, makes me angry. It's like, well, who the hell are you, you know? All right, so here we go. I'm going to uh, get on to the uh, tonight's case. <laughs> See, you know what sucks is I can never just start a show where I was like in this good mood, and then I go check an email or read the comments, and then it's like, <laughs> you know, crash and burn. Let's see. Oh yeah, that's the one. All right, so this is gonna be, apparently uh, there's a guy, remember the, during the um, the Delphi case? Yeah, remember, remember the, uh, the, Del the Delphi case night? The, um, the guy that, the, somebody called in and he told me to look at a case. He wanted to start talking about it, but I said, well, that's for Delphi. And then he was going to call in on Saturday night. Remember that? Yeah, so that's this one right here that we're going to talk about. All right. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. Let's see if I can get going here. Yeah, so this is where, this is 2006, the Blake and China Dickus case. Yeah, I did a whole live on it, Heather. Did you check my uh, account? <laughs> no. 
Yeah, I did, a, did an entire live earlier today. Went over the entire thing. How about you guys hit the notification bell? You know, when you subscribe, get the notification bell. You just woke up. Where do you live? Must be like Australia or something. Or huh? Yeah, I wasn't talking to you, Believe Angel. I was talking to An Angela. Or Heather, I mean. Yeah, it's pretty crazy though, Heather. I think it's a load of crap, actually. I think uh, it doesn't make sense given the information that uh, you know that was that he used in his defense. He was talking about how that night, the night Molly went missing, they, you know, these two guys brought him out there. That doesn't make any sense because. In the story that the, the people in jail said, they said that the, uh, you know, that, that she was in this house and all, you know, all these different things. And then they came up with this plan and there just wouldn't have been time for that. Like she was actually jogging. I, I mean, I'd love to hear what their, how they would have to change their story. It just doesn't make any sense. Oh wow! I'll help you feel better. You don't have you don't have uh, COVID, do you? <laughs> yeah. Hey, there's just Trombley. Thanks. Okay, good. <laughs> I mean, it's easy to catch COVID, so it's not like it's... Uh... Yeah, well, uh, the Delta variant, uh, I mean, in here in Oregon, everybody's just... Nobody has masks on because we have so many people vaccinated that it's just sort of, you know, you got to get back to the reality, right? So, and it's really, that's the thing, is everybody, if everybody gets vaccinated... This has a chance to just kind of go away to a really small level. If you don't get vaccinated, then there's going to be this huge group of people that keep getting it and then makes it more possible that even vaccinated people get it because that's only 95%. Yeah. Oh, really? I, I do now because I've already been vaccinated. I don't, it doesn't... You know, it's got to be a point where you can get back to normal. Yeah, well, I, I, look, I could see him getting, if there's any merit at all to what those people are saying, he'll get a, another trial. It was interesting that there was two people that didn't even know each other, but they did encounter the same individual. So, I mean, that's the same person. You know, he could have just been full of bluster on two people. Um, I don't know. <laughs> kind of makes you wonder if Rivera heard the story somewhere and just used it. And then people are like, wow, I heard that one too. Okay. But anyways, I'm going to get on to this one right here, right now. Okay, so this is Blake and China Dickus, and it's a pretty, pretty weird story. You know? So a young woman and her stepson were found stabbed to death in their Northside home Monday. This is in Franklin, Indiana. 
Um, afternoon, neighbors in, uh, let's see, uh, stabbed to death in their north side home Monday afternoon, shocking neighbors in one of the city's newer subdivisions. Yeah, so they have, this is this subdivision right here, and that's actually the home. And it seemed like it had just gotten built, and it wasn't even on maps at that time. So, let's see. Now it's in 1998. It was still ho homes were being built there, and as a matter of fact, look, th their home wasn't even there unless that moved on the map. Hold on, yeah, no, that wasn't even there. Look, so this subdivision was starting to be built. This one wasn't even there. It was just starting to be built in 2003. The tracks are in there. 2004 August, still no homes there. March 2005, still no homes there. September 2005, maybe, it looks like maybe f seven or eight. And then their house was then there in July of 2006, it was there. So, and if you go down to Street View, that this is the home right here. And look at, nobody's buying it again. Like, look, look how, it's kind of interesting. I think it's because there was a murder in that house. See, um, all the other homes have their yards are mowed, everything's normal. The street view here is 2014, but I just have a feeling they're having a hard time selling this. Look at it, it's just the wheat, everything's grown over. It's a nice house, but raise your hand if you'd love to live in a house where two people were stabbed to death. I mean, I, if, as soon as I heard that, I'd say, yeah, no thanks. Yeah, great deal and everything, but I uh, don't think so. Well, I guess if it was 10 bucks. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you would believe, Angel. I'm sure you would, because you want to be the cool person. Uh, let's see. Uh, China L. Dick is 26 and Blake Dick is 10 were found dead with multiple stab wounds in the house in the 1100 block of Aberdeen Drive. Police, I mean, if it was like 10 bucks, maybe, okay? Well, maybe it wasn't cheap, though. It's a nice house. Police would not say where the bodies were found in the recently built home in Brandon Woods subdivision. Neighbors said the family moved in about a month ago. Franklin police were called at 5.14 p.m. by Stephen S. Dickus, the woman's husband and the boy's father. So that was his biological father and his uh, wife, uh, a new wife that's not the, uh, the stepmother of the child. Investigators were following up on several leads but would not say what they were. Police had collected evidence and planned to remain at the scene throughout the night, collecting more, uh, collecting more said Franklin Police Chief John Borges. Autopsies are scheduled for, for today. Neighbors in the quiet subdivision said they were they heard nothing during the day. Next door neighbor, Darren Ross, 22, said he believed the couple had recently returned from a trip to Ecuador where they worked as missionaries. Ross's wife, Amber, 24, now let's see, who was Ross? Oh, the next door neighbor. So the next door neighbor's wife, Amber, 24, saw Oh, that's kind of interesting. Let me, let me, hold on one second. Hold on, I'm trying to find something. Yeah, it looks like most of you wouldn't have uh, wanted a house inside of a, wanted to buy a house where people were just murdered. I guess if you were a, uh, somebody into EVP readings or something like that, maybe. Okay, Amber, let me, let me look this up. I want to see where, how close this is.
And what was the other guy's name? <laughs> I'm just trying to, I want to see where exactly where those neighbors were. So it's going to take a second. Next door neighbor is Darren. Okay. Okay, there we go. And this is going to be it. I wonder if the, everybody moved from there. It'd be hard to live even, like be a neighbor next door to somebody after that either. Just. What's the name of this uh, road? Hold on. Aberdeen Drive. Oh, there it is. Got it. And that's the one. The Rosses. So that's pretty close. So uh, let's see. Next door neighbor, Darren Ross, 22, said he believed the couple had recently returned from a trip to Ecuador, probably from Ecuador, or to Ecuador, whatever, where they worked as missionaries. Ross's wife, Amber, 24, saw Dickus immediately after he discovered the bodies, she said. He was standing in the front yard area, just bent over. He just, he was just bawling, she said. Within an hour of the discovery, Amber Ross said the boy's mother arrived, parked a block away, and hey, thank you, LM, and uh, also up there, Michelle Nicklaus. Let's see. Within an hour of the discovery, Amber Ross said the boy's mother arrived, parked a block away, and sprinted to the house. So the actual biological mother. The mother was still wearing hospital scrubs, screaming, Is this my baby in there? Please tell me he's alive. Her name was not immediately available. It just broke my heart, Amber Ross said. Ward just said a... Burglary was reported Monday about two blocks away. It was discovered when the residents returned home in the early evening. Investigators were still trying to determine whether the robbery and killing are connected, he said. It's possible, but anything's possible, Borges said, that we have no physical evidence or testimonial evidence that leads us to believe these two cases were connected. The subdivision is still under construction. Several new houses have been completed and are now occupied. Several are empty, though sold. Signs are in the yards. The subdivision is off US 31. Neighbors were concerned for their own safety. It seemed like the whole block was full of cops, said Sandy Vanderbur, who lives across the street. Nothing like this has ever happened around here, said Vanderbur, who described the neighbor as peaceful and said some neighbors moved to the area for its reputation for safety. She was at work at the time of the killing, but said neither one of the teenage daughters who were at home at the time heard anything. That's pretty weird. So it would almost make it seem like, I'd, I'd like, I mean, I wonder what the time of death was.
<laughs> How you guys doing? Autopsies were scheduled today for a woman and her 10-year-old stepson found stabbed to death in their home, officials said. Stephen S. Dickus told police he, d he discovered the bodies of his wife and son when he returned home from work at 5.15 p.m. Monday. Police would not say where the recently built home, uh, where in the recently built home, the bodies of China China and Dickus, 26, and Blake Dickus were found. Now, China, well, they, well, I don't know why they um, have, you know, to put their last name twice. Uh, Stephen Dickus, 33, ran outside and told neighbors that his wife and child were dead inside. Neighbors Mark and Christine uh, Bertram said. Investigators reported finding blood throughout the home in the new subdivision and a 2 by 4 board that had blood on one end. Neighbor Darren Ross said he believed the couple had recently returned from a trip to Ecuador where they worked as missionaries. Ross's wife, Amber, said she saw Stephen Dickus immediately after he called police. He was standing in the front yard area, just bent over, so he wasn't uh, standing there. He was just bawling. I guess he could have been standing, but just been. Franklin Police Chief John Borges said a burglary was reported Monday about two blocks away in the city. It's possible. Yeah, we already went through that part right there. It's possible that anything's possible. Victim's husband says Faith is helping. And that's her right there. And they're in the on the thumbnail too, you can see it. I think he's that's a little younger than he was at the time. Stephen Sean Dickus says it's unimaginable to think he will never again exchange playful kisses with his wife or play video games with his son. Dickus found his wife, China 26, and Blake 10, his son from a previous marriage, dead about 5 p.m. Monday upon returning from his job at NSK Corporation, a Franklin auto parts manufacturing plant, to the couple's new home in Brannigan Woods. Let's see. The victim suffered multiple stab wounds, Franklin Police Chief John Borges said. Police said they had not identified anyone as a suspect by late Tuesday. We were financially broke and didn't know how we were going to pay for everything, but we were happy, Dickus said Tuesday in a phone interview. It is unimaginable to think about not being with her. I hope I can be as gracious in her death as she was in life. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of strange to, I don't know. It's always weird when people talk like that. Just two days later, I'd be just freaked out, but everybody's different. Um, Dick has said he is confident his wife and son are in heaven. That's the only relief I have from pain, he said. The couple traveled to El Salvador in Central America earlier this summer with 100 volunteers from Grace Assembly of God. Dick is 33, a business administration student at Indiana Wesleyan University, helped build a new school, which... which was backbreaking labor, he said. His wife, who was an accountant, our accounting student at Indiana Wesleyan helped a sewing team before going out with a medical team to treat children and others in need during the mission work. The couple had been married three years, he said. 
She was extremely excited, just about, yeah, so it's not a new marriage. So even if there was like an ex-boyfriend or something of the girl, uh, the wife, you know, that, that sort of would have faded away, you'd think, after three years. If it was new, then you'd start looking more at like a, somebody that was pissed off that she w married somebody else. After deciding to buy a new home, the couple ate their meals and watched movies at home to save money so they could pay for furniture and cash. Even after being together so long, we kissed just walking through the house. <laughs> there were days I felt guilty that I was married to her and didn't feel like I was worthy of her. Ask about his son, Dickus voice cracked. Oh my, he said, pausing for a short time. He was my most prized possession, a true treasure from the Lord. His favorite thing was playing video games, like every other kid. Right? On July 2nd, he said his son stood up in church and said he was giving his heart to the Lord. It was an honor to be his father while he was here, Dickus said. I know both suffered in their death, but I know they both knew the, the Lord. Dickus said he had spoken to Blake's mother, Chris, uh, Chrisma Dickus of Franklin. So that's the mother, or Christina, excuse me. Look like it all blurred together there. Thank you, Lee D. It's going to be one of those uh, nights, I can tell. <laughs> uh, I ache for her pain, he said. We both don't know what to tell each other. China Dickus' mother, uh, Marcia Anderson Franklin, said her only child was always bubbly. So that was the only child of uh, one uh, lady. That just sucks. And she never even had any of her own kids yet. A perfect little girl, Anderson said. She introduced her daughter to Dickus. They certainly were in love, she said. I hate to hear about this happening to anyone but you don't realize the pain until it happens to someone you love. Jeff Cardwell has been a friend of Sean Dickus for four years. They were an all-American family and really good servants to God. A Dickus family trust fund has been established at National City Bank. Uh, so just, uh, you know, it's a nightmare. I mean, look how weird that is in a neighborhood that well, you know, when you go back to... Let me go back in time here. So this happened in... Wow. Okay, so that makes more sense. This image right here is from the same month that they were killed. So when you look at that, you see there wasn't a lot of homes around. And so when they say next door neighbor, yep, at the time they were because there was no home there. Right? They were next door neighbors. So back then there wasn't as many people. And so then you can kind of see why somebody might not have heard something. You know, that's why the whole map thing is important. You know, is that you get a feel for the reality of it. Right? Because now you see why. You know, like when you look at it the way it looks now, you think, how in the hell could somebody come in here? Kill somebody right in the middle of the day and nobody heard or saw anything. Well, then if you go back though to July 2006, and let's see what the actual date of this thing is. Oh man, that's crazy. This is July 26th and this happened July 24th. Okay, so what you're looking at right here is two days after they were murdered. And it's actually the date of the article that I'm reading. All right. So yeah, that's a huge difference. That subdivision was just barely getting started at that point. Oops. Now we're on, now we're on to the 27th there. Yeah, it's more uh, it's not even just visuals. It's for um, 
literally figuring stuff out, you know, like, it's not like, oh yeah, okay, there's the, it's much more than that. Stabbed, strangled, and beaten, 10-year-old boy succumbed to his injuries and his mother died of stab wounds, the county coroner said. Blake and China, L. Dickus, 26, were slain in their home on the city's north side Monday afternoon. List, uh, listing more than one cause of death for a person is not uncommon. Let's see. Beaten, so stabbed, strangled, and beaten. I mean, this is just a absolute barrage in there. I mean, that sounds, seems personal, doesn't it? You know, knives, strangling, beating. I don't think uh, somebody robbing a house would do that. Listing more than one cause of death for a person is not uncommon, Johnson County Coroner Dave Lutz said. Even in cases of natural death, a coroner often will list more than one cause, such as heart disease and diabetes. Blake Dick, you know, that's such a stupid analogy, it's ridiculous. Blake Dickus' head injury uh, caused the most damage, therefore it was listed as the primary cause of death. So it sounds like he was just bashed in the head. That was a really bad injury. The primary cause of death. But the stab wounds or the asphyxiation also would have killed the boy. That's just total overkill. Police are not releasing the time of death. Well, there you go. For either victim, where the majority of stab wounds were on their bodies the number of wounds, or which weapon inflicted the injuries. Investigators are collecting evidence at the home and following leads. They have developed a list of people they plan to investigate, but they do not have a suspect. Borges didn't know when police would start processing the evidence, but said police do not want to rush the investigation. Results of blood spatter tests at the home are giving investigators a better idea of what happened in the home. Investigators are keeping the focus of their investigation broad lest they rule out vital information. Detectives meet twice a day to discuss leads or finding the, uh, findings in the investigation. Officers are working overtime on the case. Officials have not said whether the murders were connected with a burglary but are investigating as many as four break-ins recently. Blake and China Dickus were found dead in their home at 1188 Aberdeen Drive when Stephen S. Sean Dick Dickus, Blake's father, and China's husband returned home from work at 5 p.m. Just coke. So that's kind of interesting. Now, mowers found what they believe to be a blood stained shirt near the entrance to the neighborhood where two Franklin residents were killed this week. The men were cutting grass about a half mile away from the crime scene when they discovered the shirt and made the report. Police collected the shirt as potential evidence. The shirt was found at Brannigan Creek Boulevard and Brannigan Road. I was thinking, oh, so it, does, it sort of just ends right there, so that must be over here then. Brannigan Road. And right there.
that's where the bloody shirt was. And I guess you might take that in first, and then you could take that one too. But take that one, and then boom. Lake Dickus 10 and China L. Dickus 26 were found dead in their home in the Brannigan Woods in adjoining subdivision. Police are unsure whether the red substance on the shirt is blood or it is connected to the murders. Investigators will decide whether it should be processed as evidence, he said. Investigators are still combing the home and it continues on another page here. At 1188 uh, Aberdeen Drive for evidence. Police have received more than 50 tips through phone calls, emails, and information from neighbors and are learning more every day about the murders, Borges said. Hey, thank you, Amber Maiden. Police have received more than 50 tips through phone calls, emails, and information from neighbors and are learning more every day about the murders. Police are not releasing a timeline for the killing, any information about the inside of the home, or any specific information about leads detectives are following. Investigators have not yet found a link between the murders and as many as four burglaries reported. Since the murders were reported by Stephen S. Dickus, Blake's father and China's husband, Monday evening, police have collected evidence from the Dickus home on a daily basis. Thank you, Beholder. So I wonder if, uh, yeah. I mean, during they should be here processing the home still, right here in this shot. That the, it's not a great map, though. That's the problem. Let me see what the next one is. Yeah, that's a, f a full year later. And a whole bunch more homes were put in just in that year. No problem, Beholder. Yeah, well the maps and what, you're, what we're reading help tell the story. Although in this case it doesn't sound like there's a whole lot of variance in terms of places. This, this is kind of the scene. You know. uh, let's see. In homicide cases, searching the home for days is not unusual, he said. But that also means that evidence collected hasn't been processed yet. Investigators have also spent days interviewing witnesses, um, people whose names have come up during the investigation. Blank and China Dickus were both stabbed several times. Police have not said what the motive for the slaying may have been or whether there was any forced entry into the home. Yeah, where's my vomit? <laughs> hey, don't worry about it, Julie. We're just, you know, we're, we, they moved in there in 2006, okay? That's the important part of it. None of that other stuff matters. <laughs> who cares who the listing agent is? <laughs> oh my God, it's Michael Myers. It must be from the movie. Police investigating the death of two Franklin residents who were murdered Monday have a message for residents. We will find those responsible for the crime. There's my vomit. Awesome. If anyone can be gleaned from the tragedy, there is no greater motivation uh, let's see, than what it does to police officers to find people and hold them accountable for the type of action. Once you get over the initial shock and the anger, 
See, it's probably like that in the Delphi case, you know. The, this is all in Indiana. And they're probably, you know, you can see it on their faces early on. Now they don't have that same look anymore. It's just like they want to solve it. When officers respond to situations like this, the initial reaction is generally, at some point in time, anger. You know, this has happened in my community that I protect, Borges said. I can tell you that it takes a very little time for that to transfer into, I'm going to find who did this. Police continue to investigate tips and haven't narrowed down the list of suspects or funneled the investigation towards a motive or person. <laughs> yeah. So this is just more about like the officer's commitment and stuff. And I think now we get to see the actual biological mother right there. The mom says, I want to know why. And that's her right there. That's uh, Christina Dickus and Blake. Hey, thank you, Kathy L. Appreciate it. Yeah, what do you like about it? When I get really mean and mad? <laughs> yeah, that's, this whole thing is weird. I mean, even her, right? Like, she just doesn't seem like... She, she goes on missions and stuff. I mean, she's not really somebody you think of as causing a bunch of problems. Yeah. yeah, I'm not yelling this time. Well, right, right at the beginning I did. <laughs> I mean, it, yeah, I don't know. People just get excited when they send me stuff, but it's just like, oh man, can you give me a minute? <laughs> man. Oh, future no bail. Okay. So even when I go to jail, I'm already negative 15. Okay. Thank you, Lee D. Look at that. Not chop liver. I said your name right away this time. What'd you miss, Chris? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't think the dad has anything to do with it. I mean, they say that later, I think. So, I don't, I don't know. Eh, I wasn't really yelling. Good. All right. Like-minded thought, Kathy. Like-minded thought. I don't know if my other, is my regular bots working tonight? Are they, I mean? It's hard to tell. Oh, okay. Let me, let me see. Yeah, you have to like give permission. Yeah, it doesn't look like it can be uh, connected to. Oh no, it's just connected. It looks like. All right. Well, let me know if they come on in a minute. Oh, right now. Try them now. I think they're working now. I see it being connected over here. It'll work in a minute. There's one. There's one right there. Okay. <laughs> I need, look at that new months mug. That's not new at all, man. That's really old at this point. Let 
The mother of Franklin, a Franklin boy brutally murdered on Monday, performed one of her last acts in caring for her son this week. Christina Dickus dressed her son Blake 10. Oh man, what a nightmare. Oh God, like, could you imagine? She dressed him after being beaten and stabbed and strangled to have that kind of, nah. I mean, it's probably something she needed to do and wanted to do, but man, what a nightmare. Christina Dickus held Blake's baby blanket as she sat on a couch in her living room surrounded by her parents and siblings and talked about her son and only child, a third grader at Needham Elementary. Here, let me, let me just get all this in here. Shouldn't be far, yeah, it's close. The third grader at Needham Elementary was a bright, happy boy whose favorite sport was basketball. He dreamed of being a NASCAR driver and sometimes hid video games in his backpack to take to school. Blake Dickus loved to spend, hold on, gotta load this, spend time with his mother and grandparents who lived down the street from his mother's house, Christina Dick has said. He would wake up in the morning and tell me, I love you, Mom. I said it first, she said. Um, he looked forward to being a grass dancer each September in a powwow conducted in Tipton celebrating his Native American heritage and honoring veterans such as his father in the dance. His costume still hangs on a life-size cutout of Blake in Christina Dickus's front room. Blake was a picky eater who wouldn't touch anything in a restaurant that had green sprinkle, <laughs> uh, green sprinkle stuff on, on the plate. Is that um, parsley maybe? I don't know. And he couldn't stand it if somebody said they didn't like him. Well, that's something I, I don't like it when people say that to, to me, but it, it doesn't. Um, after people have said it so many times, you just realize that there's a lot of lunatics out there. You know what I mean? Uh, but when you're younger, it, it sucks, right? And who cares? Listen, everybody, if somebody doesn't like you, don't worry about it. Yeah, I don't like you either, Derek. Yeah, but listen, um, you know, like when if somebody doesn't like you, who cares, right? Because there's other people that do. You know, just like I don't like Derek. He's an idiot, right? But yeah. So, you know, so we always got the... Uh, <laughs> yeah, as an adult, it's like, ah, who cares, right? Still, you know, still bothers me at times, but, you know, not as much as it used to. I can tell you that. Yeah. He wore his feelings on his sleeve, Christina Dickus said. He must have got it from me. She can't imagine who would kill a good-natured boy. Why? I just want to know why, she said. He was my only child. It's very, very hard. He's all I live for. He's all I had. The 10-year-old died from a blow to the head, a county coroner said. But he also would have died from being strangled and, um, and uh, let's see, he was beaten and stabbed. So he was stabbed, that was fatal. He was beaten, that was fatal. 
and he was strangled, which was fatal. But the blow is what they gave the greatest weight to. Looking at the sketches on a, uh, the scratches on his arms and hands makes Christina Dickus think about how her son must have fought his attacker. The marks will not be covered by makeup at this fu- at his funeral. Oh wow. The marks will not be covered by makeup at his funeral. People are going to see what he went through and you could tell that he fought back. You can, Christina Dickus said. Blake has been missing by um, has been missed by his friends as well as some of us who have stopped by the home in tears this week. One child read a poem they had written to Blake. She said, "Christina gripped an angel necklace that she received from her son at Christmas, a special gift he brought with his own money for his mother. She will never be able to take the necklace off now." She said. The past week has been the worst of her life, something she has only survived by the support of her family, co-workers, and friends. There's not enough words to describe the pain. I want them to find who did this, Christine Dick has said. Awesome, huh? Hold on. Uh, I think everybody does. That's, they're still looking for it. As police Friday canvassed the Franklin neighborhood where a woman, uh, this is search for clues continue. Stephen Sean Dickus, 33, said he found his wife, China. Dickus, 26, so they got married at 20 when she was 23, and Blake Dickus, 10, his son from a previous marriage, dead when he got home from work at 5 o'clock. The victims were stabbed numerous times, and Blake had been beaten with an object, too. The couple moved into the, the two-story residence um, about a month prior, so they'd only lived there for a month, which is weird, too. But it was just built right around then, right? Detectives are following up on more than 50 leads. Concentrated patrols in a Brannigan, uh, Brannigan Woods and Brannigan Creek subdivision of the city's north side will continue through the weekend. Solicitors must pr- uh, provide proof of bonding, undergo a limited criminal history check, and have a license issued through the Franklin Clerk Treasury's office. Wow. If you just want to be a solicitor in that neighborhood. A a possible bloodstained shirt found on Thursday a few blocks from the Dickus house was being examined Friday. All right, now we're on to the 31st. I don't know if you could consider it worse. We'll find who did this. Two Franklin residents, China Dickus, 26, and 10-year-old Stephen Blake Dickus, were brutally slain. They were found about 5.14 p.m. That sounds really precise. On Friday, the man in charge of the department investigating the slang sat down with Daily Journal reporters and editors at the Franklin Police Department. Franklin Police Chief John Borges talked about where the investigation stands, how his officers are holding up, and how a case from a decade ago... Wait, what's it, how old is this? This one seems old. Or new, I mean. Hold on. No, this is from back then. 2006. But during the interview, Borges expressed confidence in his investigators and said they will do whatever it takes to find out who killed China and Blake Dickens. What we are saying is that we are prepared to go the long haul if that's what needs to be. 
we will do what's necessary to find the individuals who did this and hold them responsible. Okay, I think this has some... So these are like actual questions. So I think this is, even though it's long, I think it might be valuable. I mean, these are actual questions and then the answer by the investigator. So there might be some stuff in it. What did, uh, what did Lisa do? What happened? Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, Lisa, you actually accidentally got hidden when you said hello. <laughs> I don't know, it doesn't say anything yet, but let's go over these questions and answers. This is in the uh, the Daily Journal in Franklin, Indiana. You know, it looks like uh, there's no greater motivation than what it does to police officers to find people and hold them accountable for this type of action. All right, so here's the first question is, what stress and toll is this taking on your officers? They are clearly working around the clock on this. They're away from their families. Can you talk about that in personal terms? Well, you know, I, I kind of want to just go over the ones that are factual related. Uh, let's see. Is it hard for you to just not want to jump in there and be the lead investigator? Okay. I know that there's a, a, another page that's filled with just way better. I don't really care about the fluff part like this. I mean, I want to know about the family member a little bit and what they're, what they're dealing with. And you can also get a read on them as people. But like this kind of stuff, I don't really... I never get any use out of it whatsoever. I don't really care who's overworked or anything like that, or how they feel. And I'm talking about the officers. I mean, I, I know it's tough on them. That's their job, so they chose it. Now here is, uh, the, look how huge this entire page in a paper or questions and answers. Okay, you have had some very celebrated cases here. Can you talk a little bit about where this case sets in the midst? Um, I can't go into a lot of detail. I will tell you that personally this case has been very difficult. I think it's not only for just me, but for investigators in our department, for the uniform uh, division. Anytime we have a young wife and stepmother and a child taken from us here in our community, in the sanctity of their home, it's tough. All right, so here it said, you mentioned earlier that you think the investigation is going in just the right direction. Can you give the folks in Franklin an idea of where you stand on the investigation? Uh, specifics, I can't, but I can tell you in homicide cases, when we investigate them, you have a multitude of things that you do in any case, that is going to receive the amount of publicity this one does. It can be very overwhelming at first. The initial shock of that case, depending on how the media is handled, can influence the amount of leads you get, which can uh, inundate an investigation and create problems in it. Kind of, I bet the Delphi case with all the wackos turning in lead after lead of just total nonsensical garbage that it probably bogged them down for a long time. Let's see. Are you at the funnel down point? Uh, when the information from, let's see, the crime scene is brought together, they obviously, uh, we will begin to process some of the information. Uh, so they don't really it sounds like they don't really have a lot of the information in yet. Let me read the questions here, see if we want the answer. Is there a CSI factor where people think 
there can be a crime and that you can solve it in an hour. We have also had a couple of celebrated cases recently. He said, yeah, I mean, that always happens. People are like, oh my God, you should have been able to solve it. You just put the uh, little slide into the computer and it pops out a name. I think you have said that there was a lot of evidence collected from that scene. Is that correct? Certainly. I mean, this sounds just like, you know, this is Indiana. So I think they've had like a long standing policy here. So these guys are going to sound all the same. Like, this is exactly how, again, in the Delphi case, they sound, right? <coughs> so you ask a question like that. Certainly. When we look at evidence, yes, there has been a lot of evidence. Has there been cases with more? Sure. There, sure there has. Uh, the thing is that when we look at that, there is a lot of documentation. There is a lot of measuring. There's a lot of things that, that go on inside a crime scene that are time consuming. It is not just evidence collection, so to speak. They have been doing a whole gamut of things there. It is not all necessarily collecting evidence that has caused them to be out there as long as they have. <laughs> Thanks, LM. I mean, look at the, uh, I mean, he didn't even really say anything right there. You said that one, once you collect evidence and other stuff from the home, it is processed and taken to a lab. Has anything been sent to a lab yet? There has been nothing that has been sent to a lab yet. We have utilized the Indiana State Police Laboratory for these types of cases. Well, that is a lab. Do you think you will be sending that to them next week? I don't know. Question. So there is a, no mistake, we are talking about hair samples, blood, fibers. We are not going to comment on what is inside the scene. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Here we go. Here we go. Will you be testing for DNA and fingerprints? We have collected a lot of evidence. <laughs> See, there you go. And for me to make that statement tells you what we have got. I won't make that statement. Most folks know, uh, know don't you think, where uh, there was blood in the home? Now, this guy, at least this person's asking questions, you know, trying to get the answer. Certainly. I don't think that's my big, any big secret. I mean, everybody knows that the blood of Blake and China will be in the house, right? Who doesn't know that? But did you get any samples from the killer? That's really all that matters. Are you close to an, an arrest? You know, at this point, the investigation is just like I said. It's very broad. So, no. <laughs> you mentioned earlier that you are in this for the long haul. But the thing is, is you know what, he, what a great answer for that would be? How about this one? How about this one? Are you close to an arrest, sir? Very possibly. Because <laughs> that's the truth, right? I mean, the thing is, is in the next 10 minutes, somebody could run and, hey, it's Chuck Sampson, everybody. Oh, we got him. All right, should be... Uh, Yes, that's uh, very possible. Um, if the right piece of information comes in. <laughs> Man, this guy should run for office. He's, he's great. Doesn't answer anything. Have you figured out yet? You say individuals, if it is one person, more than one person. I mean... That's loosely. Individual, individuals. At this point, we're investigating this, and I cannot give you specifics. Question, have you established any kind of motive? We won't be talking about these kinds of things. Okay. Was robbery a motive? Was sexual attack a motive? He just said he wasn't going to answer. My answer is the same. In order to say that we know enough about what is going on with the crime and the specifics of individual or individual responsible um, so, no, he's not going to answer. Uh, you really can't tell motive from evidence? I think there is a possibility upon laboratory examination. 
I don't know what we would say publicly. They never really said like if she was undressed or anything like that. Yeah. Alright. And then the next day was the second half of the questions, I think. In the paper. We are reaching out to you. We're going to get a whole bunch of no, more non-answers. I don't even read. As soon as you get the first sentence in, you don't need to read the rest of it. Uh, we talked to people in the neighborhood, and they are scared. What would you tell them? Um, uh, let's see. Franklin Police Chief John Borges. As we have been investigating this case, we are telling people just the same as we would tell them any other time. You always have to be aware of your surroundings. You always have to secure, uh, to be security conscious. There you go. Are you supposed to stay inside with your kids locked in your house? No, not at all. See, you don't need to read the rest. The rest is just sort of like fluff to make the article about 70,000 words. People are changing their lifestyle because of this. They are locking themselves inside their house. Just like, see, see how that's like Delphi? I'm telling you. These kind of crimes just destroy communities' sense of freedom. We talked to a lot of people who spent a lot of money on alarm systems. Do you advise people to do that? We aren't in the business of marketing. Oh, well, what a stupid question, first of all. I mean, why not? <laughs> I mean, it's good to have alarm system. If it, his, the, the, uh, the police officer's answer should have been, if it makes them feel safer, they should definitely do it. That's the qu that's the answer. Nothing else needed to be in there. He said, we aren't in the business of marketing for alarm companies. Well, let's see if the next sentence is said, says that. What I can tell you is that people have to make choices as to what they feel makes them and their family safe. Okay, so he did say it in the next sentence, but his first sentence was pretty snarky, right? Like it was like, yeah. Question, is that what they, is that what they said? Uh, I don't know what, I don't want to read all this to figure out what he's saying. Were these folks licensed? Did they seek that approval? No, they were not. One of the things that we want to make sure is that they don't go through the formal procedure, which requires the people that are going to be out there soliciting. Oh, that's about the soliciting. Uh, do you think they picked that area because of what happened? Hmm. I'm not sure what they're referring to there. Um, in the news release you sent, you said it was not related to the homicide. Oh, the, the burglaries, I think. Would they... Uh, but would they be here without it? I think you guys know as well as I do that they are, what they are doing. This has been all over the news. Man, now I feel like i got to go read what the hell this is talking about. Let me just read this here answer here. We aren't in the business, blah, 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 blah. What I can tell you is that I think it is irresponsible for some of the alarm companies, okay, that's what they're talking about, that we have seen to go up in the neighborhood and prey on people by suggesting that is what they ought to, oh, that's sick. Yeah, I see what they're talking about. So there was a murder, and then the alarm companies show up and start going, hey, you know, preying on the fear that these people have. That, that sucks. And that's why they said that solicitors had to have all that information. We talked to a couple who talked about buying a gun. They have a small child in the house. Their decision was not to buy a gun yet because they have a small child and don't want a gun in the house. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, you should have said that on the alarm system. Uh, there's nothing wrong with a family who does it. I was brought up around firearms in a farm environment. I know that they did not uh, hand me the gun and say, there you go. There was an extensive teaching that went behind it. Uh, let's see. Are you aware of how jumpy and kind of how on edge people are in the uneasiness of the community? Sure. 
That's one of the reasons why we have increased patrols. Uh, let's see. We have had two officers and dedicated saturation patrols. What is that? Their sole responsibility is to be in the neighborhoods visible to people. How many officers are doing that? We have two on dedicated saturation patrol. Where? Uh, he, sh he shouldn't even have answered that question. Do you think more people are calling about this suspicious activity or anything noticing more? Oh, let's see. Or are they noticing more things? I don't. I don't see that. If you guys are seeing that, maybe, but I don't see that. I don't know what I don't know what they're referring to. I just don't want to read the seventy-five thousand words of fluff. What type of things should people call about? What kinds of information are you looking for? You know your neighborhood where you live? If it doesn't look right to you, it probably isn't. So there you go. That was, a, that was a long interview. But we shortened it up for you. Well, I think some of the questions were good, and you know, I kept pressing for something, but then some of them were just, you know, <coughs> sounded like that in my head. Hey, look at that. Stacy sent me on my uh, my vacation trip, you know, where you guys get to buy me some drinks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just sit back and hang out on the beach. Vomit on all your vacations, huh, Beholder? Thank you, Believe Angel. And there's Linda Howell, as in Linda Molden Howe of the Cattle Mutilations and Crop Circle. Well, the hat doesn't, uh, my other hat doesn't go with the shirt, Linda, so I gotta, I gotta keep this one on. Thank you, Rita Schaefer. But the hat, somewhere around here. <laughs> wow, it's weird that it's almost the same music, a little more ominous. Yeah, the black one with the white. Yeah. Where is your hat? This one actually has the same color here as the shirt, but it... It's a golf shirt. Thank you, Rita Schaefer. All right. I gotta get some uh, tequila. I'll be back in 20. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Peachy Keen. That sounds like something Mary Lou would say. Hey, that's Peachy Keen. <laughs> Fruity drink. A tropical drink. Thanks. I love labs. Or love labs. Man, say love labs fast five times. Love labs. Slap, slap. Oh, man. Forget it. That's just it. Say love labs and see if you can keep using the V and the B. And if you say you can do it fast over and over again, you're lying. 
Thank you, Tani Lee. Love Labs, loves lab. I can't even do it twice. Love Labs, loves labs. Yeah, try to say that really quick. <laughs> yeah, love <laughs> that's a, That's right, that's right. Thank you guys for the the lovely vacation. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to say. I, I couldn't believe it. Right when I said it once, I screwed up. I can't even do it the second time, right? Like you can't even, you can get the first one out. Love Labs, love, and then it just, you can't, like, see. Love Labs, loves lab. see? Then you say the loves or something in the second. Makes you say slup slaps, slup slups. I can't even say slub slaps. That's even harder. Now just love, yeah. Ah, oh, look at that. Love is easier, Gray. Oh, love me? Oh, come on. Love, Gray Hughes, is easier. <laughs> oh yeah? What do you guys think of you quietly frozen? We are jamming to the music. Yes, I remember Mr. Rogers. Uh, who's we quietly frozen? Do you got a house full of people jamming to the music? Oh, your granddaughter? Awesome. Oh, yeah. Lady Elaine. Dun, 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 dun. Believe, believe, Angel. Believe that. I was there, not here. Yeah. It does look like it'd be nice and comfortable. My green screen isn't working too well, as you can see. Hey, it's Jamie McLaughlin. I don't know if he was or not. Hey, thank you, Scott Holland. Yeah, so right now this case is just weird, right? There's like no... It just seems like the most random thing in the world. I always think that's weird when you have a map that's so close. Like, uh, like literally two days later, this image was taken on a satellite. Tequila time. Sending All you right. a few cocktails to the Goat of True Crime Investigations. Well, thank you. All right. Maybe I'll get off the vacation and get back to the story. Yeah, it does seem like overkill in person. Man. But man, to take out a kid like that? Tequila time. Sort of weird. It'd be interesting. I wonder if they ever did. A, I mean, it sounds kind of weird, but a DNA test on the the boy, because that might be an angle. Like, do a DNA test on the the on uh, Blake. 
And believe it or not, the other case that I'm interviewing on, his name is Blake, too. Because then you could maybe find a motive somewhere there. Thank you, it's Chris. All right, I'm gonna get out, out of the vacation. Seven, one, I don't know what that means. Oh, 71 Fahrenheit, 21 degrees. Plus. Thank you, guys. Yeah, and as you know, like when you guys support the channel, for those of you who are new that are watching, uh, at the end of the month, a lot of a big portion goes to charity, crime-related charities. And 2020, we did 22,000, and then we're already at 22,000 after June. So, I mean, some of that was just crazy months and people matching. So, my goal though is still like 30 something. I don't know. What, I don't even know what the goal is now. 35, we'll say. Thank you, Believe Angel. All right, so here we go. We're moving on to the next article. This is August 1st. And let me, I gotta get my, my music playing again. There we go. Oh, and there's Beholder with the vomit. Anytime you can see Beholder's vomit face, everything in the world is just right. <laughs> that went wrong? I don't know. What, the, what does that mean? <laughs> dun, dun, dun. All right, so slaying evidence assessed. Evidence from the north. Oh, you can't see it. Let me go to the middle. There we go. Evidence from the Northside Franklin home where a woman and child were killed will soon be sent to the state crime lab. Police are meeting today with officials from the Indiana State Police Crime Lab to sort out which evidence should be processed first. Investigators spent nearly a, a week collecting evidence from the Brangen Woods subdivision home where China and Blake Dickus were murdered. China was 26. Blake was 10. Detectives and officers met Monday morning to discuss which information should be processed first by the state crime lab. Police prioritized evidence deciding which information would be most helpful for the case and should be uh, reviewed first. They then decided how many items would be submitted based on the backlog at the lab. Borges didn't know when the results would be back or if police will send what uh, what mowers believe to be a oh the mowers yeah, believe to be a bloody shirt collected last week. Police are not releasing the type of evidence collected and will not discuss how come they weren't able to tell that was blood just quickly? Yeah you, know, you just I'm sure there's chemicals you can just quickly do in a lab, take a little part of it. And then if it turns out that that was blood from one of the victims, or even the killer, that would be better. But if it was blood from one of the victims, if they still have that shirt, my God, it's probably a treasure trove of touch, uh, not more than just touch DNA. I mean, it, well, it would be touch DNA, but it would be all throughout the inside of that shirt as he peeled it off, threw it on the ground, so he wasn't running around with a bloody shirt on it. Yeah, well, you just want to test it on a little tiny bit. You wouldn't want to waste it. A lot of these places just screw up the entire sample. Uh, investigators were easily able to prioritize, priori uh, prioritize several pieces of evidence they believe are most crucial in the investigation. He said he won't know how the evidence will help the investigation until it's reviewed. The Indiana State Police Laboratory Division offers fingerprint identification can uh, yeah, that'd be crazy if they had a fingerprint you'd think a fingerprint location would be, would be great for DNA touch DNA too right like here's a fingerprint oh wow the guy touched right there let's collect 
a touch DNA sample from the fingerprint area. Let's see. Investigators spent the week weekend talking to neighbors and patrolling the area. Since last week, the number of leads police are investigating has increased to more than 85, which includes tips called in or reported. He said that shows that neighbors are doing what they what police have asked for reporting information. Some of the tips also came from officers patrolling the neighborhood and talking to residents. Police do not have a specific suspect in the investigation, but are following up on several good leads, he said. China and Blake Dickus were found dead in their home July 24th. Both have been stabbed several times. Blake Dickus died of blunt force trauma to the head, stab wounds, and asphyxia. China Dickus died of stab wounds. Yeah, so, you know, Blake did have more stuff, as somebody noted. Sounds like he had more things going on. You know, it might be because he fought, too. Like, maybe she got stabbed and he came running out and then, you know, the guy tried to kill him and he didn't seem to be dying, so he tried different methods. Something like that. When you're 10 years old, you're pretty wiry. And you can do some things, you know, it's not like you're... Okay, so they, again, they're picking the evidence to send to the lab. Yeah, and so this is one of the things, like, they're doing in the, uh, in the cases right now. You know, slaying site gawkers exasperate neighbors. The vehicles creep by with brake lights coming on as they approach 1188. Aberdeen Drive, passengers' faces are pressed against the window. I mean, I understand people doing it, but, you know. If, the thing is, I don't, I don't think it's as weird, like, let's say, if a somebody that's a writer or, a, you know, even, hell, even a true crime YouTuber does it. But when just random people, out of curiosity, I don't know, it's getting sort of weird at that point. It's kind of like uh, the reason that when you know when there's a traffic jam, there's nothing going on on the road, right? Like, <laughs> everybody's pulled over to the side, but there's always that one idiot in the front that slows down to take a look. And then every single next car slows down to take the... And you're backed up for 10 miles now because people are idiots, right? So, for example, uh, like in golf, right? Golf should take three hours and 30 minutes at, at the very most to play 18 holes. But nope, that doesn't happen because you got these people that when they are, they're about to go do their putt, they leave their entire cart in the middle of the fairway, 100 yards back up the fairway. Then they go up the putt, and then when they're done, they have to walk all the way back down the fairway to get their cart and then drive it away when in reality, they should have placed their cart between the green and the next hole. Okay, do you get that? So when they're done, they just start walking away to the next hole. Okay, and then they treat every shot like they're a pro. I mean, you if you guys would be shocked how quick I play. I, this is what I do in real life. Watch this. I'm walking up to my ball, 100, 110, boom, gap wedge, put it down, swing, I'm out of here. Okay. It literally, I, I played a round in 47 minutes in a cart, okay? That, that's insane, but everybody just takes forever. Hey, you know, like, like let's say you have 200 yards in, right? And uh, somebody goes, hey, can you tell me what I should be using? Uh, I don't know, how about hit your seven iron? Then they hit the seven iron and it rolls eight feet. They put the club back in the bag, strap it over their shoulder, they walk the eight feet, place the bag back down, spread out the legs on it, and then turn to the same person and say, hey, what club should I use? And I yell from the background, the same damn club you just used, you idiot. Okay, so 
Yeah, so that's what happens on the golf course. It's really about the slowest thing you've ever... <laughs> it's just... Oh, man. There should be a class that you have to take or you can't play. Uh, it's probably like a 7 or 8, something like that. I mean, I've... A couple years ago, it was probably like a 5 or 6. But now it's, you know... Had a decent round a couple weeks ago. But. Yeah, but the thing is, is <laughs> if you don't know your yardages, you probably suck. Okay, so don't ask again what I need to hit on the next one. Just take out your club, swing it again. Hope to God you hit it this time. Yeah, and the thing is, is go to the range for weeks, then go play golf. Okay. Because you'll probably be able to actually hit the ball and have fun instead of renting a bag of clubs because you've never played before. Then you go out there and you miss the ball nine times in a row when you swing. So, yeah. And when I say this, I'm not being snobby whatsoever. You shouldn't be playing and ruining the rounds of everybody else who went out there. Okay? That's just the reality of it. And what I just said right now if every golfer that really knows how to play heard that, they'd be clapping at home right now. Okay, you should probably go to one of those nine-hole courses that are sort of meant for beginners, that kind of thing. But when you go out to the, a decent course and you can't play, what are you doing out there? <whistles> wow. So anyways, that kind of reminds me, I'm sorry for my long tangent, but it's sort of similar to these, uh, these gawker people here. Just ruining it. I don't know what you're talking about, Red Hot Amanda. <clears throat> yeah, we're just doing a... We're just covering the case. Don't worry. Just whatever I'm saying is what I'm saying. Uh, let's see. Yeah, putt-putt. That's for everybody. You know, that's... But that's my advice. Go to the range. Take a lesson. Learn the etiquette. Then go out and play. If you keep missing the ball, pick the ball up. Move on to the next hole. You don't get to finish the hole with 97 shots, okay? That's not going, it's not going to work. All right. So anyways, you got these idiot uh, gawkers walking around. Uh... Neighbors had mixed emotions when the crime scene tape was cut down and police left the home. Uh, let's see. But both agree about the gawkers. They want it to stop. The high traffic from last week has slowed since officers pulled over nearly everyone who drove on the street. Ah, huh, that was a good idea. Keeps the gawkers away and, hey, maybe you have somebody re returning to the crime scene. They're not going to see anything. We're trying to get back to normal, and it makes it harder. See, it's literally like a museum piece, like going to Lizzie Borden's house. What different, you know, it's like you're not going to see anything. You're just looking at the house where people were killed out of some weird, morbid curiosity. I mean, I, yeah, later on, it's cool, but right then, I mean, you know, like 10 years from now, like if I drove there tomorrow, that wouldn't be weird because... Nobody's going there. It would just be me driving down the street, uh, looking at it, and I don't think... It might be a little weird-looking, suspicious, like, what's this guy doing, slowing down? But I would be doing it just to literally have it on film as part of what I'm doing right here. You know, I would never... If I wasn't doing true crime, I wouldn't be driving there to take a look at it. Let's put it that way. And... Like when Cairo does it for the show, that's a totally different thing too. Because that's literally for me to use on the show. Like what he did in that one case with those two girls that were, uh, their car was missing and then it was found inside of the, it flew off the side of the road, basically, through an intersection. Okay, so for all of you, though, that are about going to play golf soon, just re remember what I just said, okay? 
when you're when you get to the green to putt place your golf cart uh, either the driving one or the one that you pull on the way to the next tee off box okay the next tee box so just put it over there then go putt and then when you're done putting walk over to your cart walk over the tee box then write down your score don't put the ball in stop on the green hold your cart up start writing shit down on it uh, do that somewhere else okay everybody <laughs> hey this feels good i I'm, I'm i'm getting a like a cathartic feeling out of this all right Yeah, like if you're somebody that's terrible, go play at like 7 o'clock at night, get about 8 or 9, you know. You can play two balls a hole, just don't don't interfere with anybody else. <laughs> it's just weird out there, man. It's bizarre. Uh, thank you guys, though. Hi, my name is Gray. I'm a golfer. Hi, Gray. Yeah, this one time, I'm going to be sitting around in a circle. <laughs> yeah, I'm a disgruntled golfer. I'll actually yell sometimes on the course. Just from way in the back, like, hey! And I'll even drive up to the group in front and say, hey, you know, you guys really need to keep up with the group in front of you. I don't have any problem doing it. I'm always the designated guy to do that. Yeah. Yeah, they might... Um, hey, uh, Kit, they might have called me that. Oh, what an ass, because he came up and told us that to hurry up, even though we're just only three holes behind the group in front of us. Oh, yeah? <laughs> that probably didn't go over too well, devotee. Yeah. Yeah, golf, if a golf round takes five hours, somebody is responsible. It's really, it never should happen. Like this last week was really slow and it was four hours and 15 minutes. So we were thinking, man, could you imagine if that was like, it? Uh, I don't know, it's hard to explain, but I hope you guys get the point there when you're out there playing. All right, um, let's see, Dickus, I broke down and had a good cry. Steven... Dickus said he broke down in tears when a detective told him he had passed a lie detector test. <laughs> That's a little weird. Oh, thank God, I passed it. Yeah. Franklin police announced Thursday that Dickus is not the focus of the investigation into the death of his wife, China Dickus, 26, and son, Blake. Detectives ruled him out because he passed the polygraph test, and after they put together a timeline of events, Franklin police chief, uh, so that, that's more of it. Like they put together a timeline and he passed the polygraph. I broke down and had a good cry this morning, Dickus said. Sean Dickus found China and Blake Dickus dead in their uh, Brannigan Woods subdivision home in the north side of Franklin on July 24th when he came home from work. China Dickus died of stab wounds. And... Um, And, uh, and oh yeah, and then Blake Dickus died of blunt force trauma, stab wounds, and asphyxia. The police announcement Thursday is a relief to Dickus and his family. He said he hopes that police will soon find the person who killed his wife and son, and that the news will stop the strange looks he gets when he goes to the store or out to a restaurant. A friend recently had to defend Dickus in a garage sale to people talking about the murders. Yeah, yeah. And you know, there's some YouTube channels that create that same vibe for families. You ever notice that? He said he hoped, uh, and then he said, he hopes that now the speculation about his involvement will stop. Dickus said he talked with investigators helping in any way he can since the investigation began. Borges agreed, saying Dickus has been cooperative all along. Dickus said he has racked his brain trying to think of any suspects or names he could give to police. I just don't know of anything 
or, or of anybody who would be capable of doing something like this. You know, it's weird. If it's no robbery, I mean, then you start getting into, you know, a psychopathic killer type person who just, that's what he was doing. See, those, those people don't have motives other than a psychological one. It's not one that you can, you know, say, oh, he was trying to steal this or, oh, he was jealous or something. I mean, this is a really strange case. There's probably a lot of rumor stuff that goes around on. Let's see. That was a horrific, brutal crime involved a child, so it's more disturbing yet. Dickus said he has racked his brain trying to think of any suspects or names he could give to police. I just don't know of anybody that could do something like that. Dick has said he can't think of anyone his family has fought with, any neighbors who may have disliked him, or any past friends who would have uh, had that much aggression. He hopes that police have a suspect or will have one when they get lab results from evidence. <laughs> it's just so crazy. Yeah, it's just... All right, so again, it says the husband and father of two people murdered in their Franklin home is not a suspect in the killings at this time. <laughs> they always have to throw this shit in, you know, because that, that opens the door for the same whack job trolls, right? Where they can say, oh, not at this time, but so he's still potentially... Investigators have not focused the investigation on any suspects and are still following leads. Police have not ruled out the possibility that the victims knew their killer. He hopes anyone holding back information because they believe it wasn't relevant will now come forward. Five people walk into someone's house while cooking pancakes, killed someone, giving him, giving him a light. Uh, I don't know what that means. Sounds like he killed five people. Thank you, uh, this account on PayPal and Amy, thank you. A cat eye donation. <laughs> thank you very much. Appreciate it. But, uh, thanks uh, to both of you on PayPal. All right, excellent. Uh, let's see. What do we got here? Investigators use both the timeline of the killings and other investigative procedures such as the polygraph test to decide Sean Dickus was not the focus. Polygraph test results can fall into one of three categories. Deceptive, non-deceptive, and inconclusive. Sean Dickus' test results was non-deceptive. So that was as best as you can get, I guess. Borges did not release details about the timeline because police have determined for the killing, the killings, but said witnesses' statements and records have helped police develop them. So it sounds like that they were killed during the day. And the reason we know that is he got home at 5. It, that appears that he has a normal job between 
you know, eight and five, let's say. And so since his timeline was even relevant, then it shows you that they were killed during the day. Had it been where it was like, well, we just don't know. I mean, we do have his timeline. Well, then that means that they could have been killed during the night. I think they know that they weren't. And that's why his timeline is relevant. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? So I think that makes it, I think it makes it pretty clear that they were killed during the daytime. Yeah, it sounds like he's not the killer. Yeah, so, but his timeline is what helped him and the polygraph test. Um, his timeline would be meaningless if they determined they were killed at like one in the morning. I mean, it would be, well, I mean, it's not meaningless, but um, if he works, starts work at nine, his whole day at work and all that stuff would absolutely be meaningless. He definitely would have, should have, and could have been home at that time. Although I have to be honest, I don't know what his, um, his, uh, you know, what he does for work or his schedule. Yeah, it takes four to six hours to get rigor mortis. Evidence collected throughout the investigation has been sent to the state police laboratory, but Borges did not know when investigators would get the results. Borges would not say whether police have found a murder weapon. China and Blake Dickus were stabbed multiple times, police have said. The sheriff's deputy found a knife in Whiteland on Tuesday, which was turned over to Franklin police, but Borges said he didn't know if the knife was connected. Police are treating the knife in the same way they treated the, what the mowers believed was a bloody shirt. I mean, it, they keep talking about the, what the mowers believed was a, was a bloody shirt. You guys know if it was blood or not. I mean, they found it like the next day. You would absolutely know if... <sighs> yeah, unbelievable. All right, so now we're... Getting into some genetic fingerprint often key to cases. A single strand, this is 2006. A single strand of hair, skin cells, and a drop of blood scraped off of a cigarette butt have each helped local detectives solve criminal cases ranging from home break ins to murders. The evidence can be crucial to a case because it clearly identifies a person. For example, sheriff detectives solved the two year old burglary of an Indian Creek high school coach's garage uh, high school school coach's garage after lab results came back on a cigarette butt that had been discarded on the street. The DNA evidence also helped solve the murder of Kelly Eckhart, an 18-year-old who disappeared after leaving work in Franklin. DNA is a molecule found in all human cells and body fluids including blood and saliva, because DNA is unique to each person, it is often called a genetic fingerprint. Samples collected for specific investigation are given set guidelines. Now we're about 70% through these. Cannot be saved in a na nationwide or... Let's see, what was that last thing? Uh, samples collected for specific investigations are given set guidelines. They cannot be saved in a nationwide or statewide system, and people are not required by law to voluntary. Well, it's totally different now. They have CODIS now. I thought CODIS was around even back then, though. But law enforcement officials and a defense attorney have different views on whether a person should voluntarily submit to testing. Uh, when collecting DNA, investigators must either get the potential suspect to agree to the collection, like when they're in interrogation, they say, hey, can we swab? Or get a court order demanding the evidence, said Jeff Cott. So you can get it demanded, but you can also 
take it from discarded uh, garbage. Police cannot force a person to give up a DNA sample without a court order. That's, this is back in 2006. Anyways, I don't, that's just about DNA. It's not really... Alright, so this is about the mother, or China actually, this is about her, the stepmom. So this is a letter to the editor written by the mother of China. So I thought this would be kind of good to read, just to know about her a little bit more. Although I, I don't normally do that, but like in this case, it's... You know, maybe there's something in there. You know. This is written in loving memory of China L. Dickus. China was my one and only daughter. She was taken away on July 24th. China 26 and her stepson Blake 10 were brutally murdered in their home. They had just moved in about a month before. Blake was over for his weekly visit. Oh man, so he was just coming over to visit the dad. Little did they know. So that's sort of an interesting thing. Like he was just going over there to visit from the mother's home. I wonder if they've looked into everybody related to the biological mother. Little did they know something terrible was going to happen that afternoon. No one heard or saw anything, but someone took China and Blake's life. They were found brutally stabbed to death that afternoon who was the last to see them alive? Who killed them? They were last seen alive around lunchtime. There you go. From that point on, no one could reach her. So that shows you that they were alive around lunch. He got home at 5, so rigor mortis, you know, probably wasn't even set in because they probably were killed at, I mean, even then, 5 hours, you can still not have it yet. They were last seen alive around lunchtime from that point on. And what, what does lunchtime mean? Is that 1 o'clock? No one could reach her. Blake's grandmother was coming over to pick him up because he was going to go to a movie with her. He was going to go to a movie with his mother. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Okay, so Blake's grandmother came over to pick um, up Blake to go to a movie with his mother. China was a very loving person. Once she met you, uh, she never forgot your name or who you were. Let me see. Let me read that part again. But they were lasting a while. China was very loving. Grandmother was coming over. Blake's grandmother. Okay. And who's the mother, though, to a movie with his mother? Okay, so that would be with the biological mother. China was a very loving person. Once she met you, she never forgot your name or who you were, and you would probably get a small note and a card in the mail from her just to say hello. China never I met a stranger. She liked everyone, and she made you feel like you had known her for years. They had just gotten back from a mission trip to El Salvador, China prayed with a lady for one day and night. The lady had never spoken a word, and she said her first word to, to China. China collected butterflies. It was for God's new creation. And ornament pictures or books, anything with butterflies. A lot of her, hey, there's some, you know, Cairo, and uh, she collected butterflies. Anything with butterflies, a lot of her cards had butterflies on them. You never saw her without a smile. She felt everyone had a good side. You just had to bring it out. China was a straight A student at Marion College and was in the honors program. She then switched to Indiana Wesleyan University to study accounting, keeping her grades high. Her biggest goal was to make their home a very happy one. There was always laughing and playing around. She also enjoyed trying new recipes. There were always chocolate chip cookies or something baked in case company stopped by to visit. On July 24th, someone killed both of them. 
whoever did this terrible act. Yeah, well, here, you know, I was just going to say about the cookies. You know, if anybody, like, if my wife cooks, makes cookies, they're, they're not staying around for anybody to come by to visit, okay? Uh, they just end up in my belly. I just sit there. I mean, if they're chocolate chip cookies, it's like you could put them on a conveyor belt. As China's mother, I will never get to see her fulfill her dreams. She wanted a baby girl, so she never even got to have a kid. We will all miss that wonderful day when she would have... Uh, I know, I know. You got to admit, though, that is... that is who Does anybody just let cookies sit around? Are you kidding me? Like, if somebody pulls out a tray of freshly baked chocolate chip cookies... And then there's this plate with them on it. Who the hell just looks at them and, hey, leave them there. They're for people visiting. Are you kidding me? I, I'm like uh, my dog Petro. Uh, he used to like put his arms around a plate if it had uh, chicken pot pie gravy on it. Uh, this dog would lay on top of it to keep you from taking it. That's exactly what I would do. I would just sit there and put my mouth at the end of a table and just shovel them in over and over again. Of course, I have to put them in the microwave oven to get them just, you know, keep them that little warm and gooey. Yeah, oh, come on. You know it, man. Come on. You should have seen that dog Petro, though, man. He just, he going, Arr. hey, listen to this. I, I don't know if I've told you that, but he, this is what he literally sounded like this. Listen to this. He was a Pomeranian. So I think he got his fingernails cut into the quick before. So they bled, all, you know, they bled, but then on a different time. So if you just took his paw in your hands and started to move clippers near, he'd go like this. It was the weirdest sound in the history of the world. I mean, dogs can't even make the sound that it was making. It was weird. And even if you weren't clipping him, he would just make that sound. And boy, I, like I was just saying, a plate. If you ate a chicken pot pie and had that gravy on it, and you said, hey, lick the stuff off of this. <laughs> he came up there. You literally could put the plate back in the cupboard when he was done with it. Because there wasn't an atom of gravy on that thing. I mean, it was... He'd lick in the same spot for 30 minutes... It's like, hey, it's all gone now. Um, yeah. All right. So that was my my story about Petro the dog. Oh, come on. He can't make that sound. Well, it would be Jack if I was actually explaining how to cook something. Who are you talking to? Me? Let's see. Yeah, well, I named him after Drazen Petrovich. He, I, he died right around the same time I got him. P E T R O. <laughs> Who's Zozo talking to? Who who is trolling up there? I'm trying to find something. Oh, that one. Let's see. Let's see what it said. <laughs> I think he was being sarcastic. To be honest with you, I think he was being sarcastic. <laughs> it was so crazy, dude. Absolutely crazy. All right, let me get back to this. So I'm, I apologize that the cookie comment, it went all the way uh, to all these other stories, okay? But it made me think of that, and I figured, hey, why the hell not say it? And that wasn't me that typed in What's Up Freaks.
We will all miss that wonderful day when she would have brought a baby girl into this world. Could have been a boy, too. I will never know the joy of being a grandmother to her children. Someone so brutally took her and Blake's life. For what reason? It was too horrible to be a mistake. She wanted to make sure their home was happy and the kids were raised in the church. She grew uh, so much in faith and with God, she wanted everyone to feel the same. Sure, China and I had our differences, meaning they probably fought often, but there was never a day go by we didn't say I love you, China, or I love you, Mom. And you're my only mom forever, so you're stuck with me. I still tell her several times a day how much I love her and miss her, but I don't hear I love you too, Mom. It was so hard to believe that all their dreams and happiness were taken away in a very short time. Who was evil enough to do something like this? We all pray for whoever did this. Uh, Blake will never grow up and date for a first time or even drive a car. Who could be so cruel? And now, as China's mother, I have been robbed of my only child. I will never know the joy of having a grandchild to hold and to spoil. China wanted to have a baby girl. Then they would have, uh, then they would have one of each. China and I love you all my, oh, both, I mean, a kid from each, each of them would have their own kid, I guess, I don't know. China, I love you with all my heart and soul. If I had been there, I would have suffered for you. You were my life and now it is happy, uh, is half empty. I pray God will uh, watch over you, my one and only beautiful and precious angel. This has been the hardest thing I have ever had to do in my entire life. I am trying my best to get through every single day. I love and miss you too more than words can tell. Uh, see you soon. Uh, China, I watched you grow from my sweet baby girl into the beautiful and happy young lady you became. The hardest thing for me to do in my life is letting you go. I don't think I can do that yet. I know it's time for you to spread your angel wings and fly, but you will always and forever be in my heart. I am just not ready to say you can go. I will love and miss you for the rest of my life. You can tell she's just kind of having... It's not like it's not a a, a cohesive uh, thing. It's like she is writing and what she's thinking right at that moment. I think it's kind of cool like that. I will love and miss you for the rest of my life. The loss of a child is surely the most painful hurt, let alone two at one time, because the love between parents and child is the most precious love of all. It is impossible to understand why these beautiful, special people are taken away so soon. The hurt we feel will never go away. All we have now is memories to hold on to. Uh, donation, let's see, donations to China, Dickus Foundation can be made. Donations will be used for scholarships, charities, and in case in a case like ours for reward money, please check the website at www.forchina.com. If anyone has information on this double homicide, please let us know. You can be anonymous. I mean, this is still back in 2006. Now they sent some evidence to the FBI, Franklin police are again recruiting the help of the FBI in investigating the murders. Evidence collected in the investigation into the deaths of two people in the Franklin in Franklin could be too complex for local laboratories. So some of the materials will be sent to the FBI evidence laboratory. I wish they I wish this case happened right now. It just would be I mean the amount of Forensic information. I mean, who knows what's been lost over the years? Hopefully, they're resending it. 
Detectives continue to work on the case daily, but no suspects have been named. Each and every day, we get a little bit closer. Franklin police have worked with the FBI in other parts of the murder investigation, such as with behavioral analysis. Wouldn't it be cool to get the profile of that one? Some of the material that the federal lab handles could include scientific analysis of specific evidence or testing mitochondrial DNA. DNA is found in all human cells, yeah. So, you know, hopefully they collected some DNA, but you know, have they re-upped during the genetic genealogy phase of the world? I mean, this is... All right, so that was the last article from 2006. And then I, it just kind of skipped to 2013. Shortly after 5 p.m. July 24, 2006, Stephen Sean Dickus returned from work to his home to find his wife, China, and 10-year-old son, Blake, dead. China Dickus, 26, died of multiple stab wounds. An autopsy later confirmed, and then Blake also had been stabbed several times, but was killed by a blow to the head, and he'd also been strangled. The Franklin Police Department has not revealed whether there were signs of a break-in where the bodies were found in the home or whether China Dickus was sexually assaulted. No other motives have been have emerged. <sighs> yeah. Uh, let's see. It, this is about China again. Uh, the family. Sean, who had previously spent four years in the U.S. Marine Corps, enlisted in the Indiana National Guard in 2009. Um, who's Sean? I don't know who's Sean. Oh, that's the husband. He's a staff sergeant with the 1438th Transportation Company out of Franklin. In a telephone interview from Camp Phoenix outside uh, Campbell, Sean said in the years immediately after the murders, he stumbled personally and struggled professionally. He quit his solid paying job and opened a pizza restaurant with some partners but lost that business to a stalled economy. Yeah, that's 2009. Yeah. He had trouble finding another job. His distinctive last name, he said, made it particularly easy for potential employers to remember the case or find his history on the internet. That sucks. Uh, he thought about changing his name, but he said he rededicated himself and credited the military with giving him structure, discipline, and purpose. He has lost hope the murders will be solved, but said China and Blake always will be part of him. Now, it sounds like he kind of gave up on his, you know, it seemed like he was really big into church and stuff, but they, there's not a day that goes by when I don't wish that I could just hug both of them. Blake's mother, Christina Dickus, is a medical assistant on Indianapolis Southside and lives in Bargersville. She enjoys pursuing photos of Blake and talking about things, he said, and he said, and did that make, and that he said and did it that made her laugh or marvel at his sweetness. She remains haunted by how he died and that no one has been held accountable. Where does the case stand? Franklin Police Department Sergeant John Borges, who was the police chief at the time of the murder, remains confident the case can be solved. The department has investigated about 450 tips and leads since 2006, and information from the public continues to trickle in. Because no one has been charged, no one can be completely ruled out as a suspect, Borges said. I'm uh, in most homicides, the people closest to the victims are investigated, and Borges said Sean Dickus was cooperative with investigators from the beginning, agreed to take a polygraph test. See, a lot of times a polygraph test is merely 
to see if they agree to take it. And that's, he even says it. He doesn't even say how he did on it. He just said he agreed to take it. So that sort of gives away the motive of why they use the polygraph test. It's not admissible in court, one. Two, uh, or there is, I'm not making a list here, but the main reason they use it is to see, hey, would you mind coming in to take a polygraph test? And if the person goes, oh, I, you know, I don't really want it, then you sort of look at him like, ooh, he's got something to hide, they think. That's, what, that's, what, that's how they look at it. He is not the focus of the investigation. Well, the next question should be, is there anybody that is the focus? All right, now we're into 2017. Another article here, the Daily Journal. Okay, it looks like he's a little bit older than that one. Eleven years after a woman and child were killed in Franklin Hum, Solving the case remains a top priority for the police department. Investigators still routinely check on tips and leads they receive. The police department still is offering a reward of 25000 for information. The slaying of China Dick is 26 and, and uh, Blake Dick is 10 on July 24, 2006 are personal to the Franklin Police Department. Most of the guys who were on the department when it occurred it is very, uh, most of the guys who were on the department when it occurred, it is very personal for them. Carter. Uh, wait, I wonder if that's, re that guy's the, the relative of um, Carter in the Delphi case. Because I've actually seen his name multiple times and he looks very similar. The police department takes it personally when, or Doug Carter, I guess, right? Personally, when someone says they haven't done enough to solve a case, especially with the hours and sleepless nights that have gone into the investigation, the anniversary of the killings is often a time when more interest is paid to the case, leading to some more tips. Uh, let's see. And they want that, let's see. Um, but the police department still regularly gets information, and they want that information to continue coming in even if people think the tip is old or something police already know about. Don't worry everybody, we're getting near the end. <laughs> uh, any information is good information. Uh, well, that's Scott Carter. I think there was this another person that looked like Doug Carter. I don't know if that's him. One possible piece that could help with the case and others in the state's new law that requires anyone arrested on a felony charge to submit a DNA sample. But police know that someone knows what happened to China and Blake that day. Somebody somewhere knows something. Either they were part of it or they have information on the case. And they hope that person will finally come forward and give police the information they need to solve the case. We are confident someone has the information. So that was 2017, 2018. This is the last article here. Took me a lot, almost like like many hours to get all these. Twelve years after a gruesome double murder in Franklin, police know some someone has the answers that will help solve the case. On July 24, 2006, Blake Dickus 10 and China 26 were murdered in the home. Uh, both had been stabbed multiple times, and Blake died of blunt force trauma to the head and asphyxia. About the same time, five homes were broken into within a half mile of the home where China and Blake Dickus were murdered. 
The break-ins all happened during the daytime on weekdays between June 2006 to July 2007. Huh, so they were, it happened during the daytime on weekdays. So it's weird how those all happened. And maybe they were just home, but why would you go and do all of that? Stabbing them over and over. Why not just wear a mask or something? I mean, it's just... Uh, such as cash, coins, jewelry, food, or drinks were taken. And in each one, a screen in the home was cut in a T-shape, allowing someone to easily get in to the home through a window. Police have continued investigating that as a possible angle. An active investigation, Franklin police have continued investigating the case. and have received about eight to 10 tips a year and investigate each one as far as they can. But they know someone out there has the information they need and would solve the case, he said. Someone has told somebody, we want someone to come forward and tell us what they know so we can give this family some closure and, and justice. The case has a huge impact on the families of the victims the communities and officers who have worked the case, Carter said. How you can help. Every year near the anniversary of the murders, police seek uh, to drum up interest in the case, hoping to get new tips from the public. We just want to keep it fresh, try to keep it out there, Carter said. Investigators want people to think back to anything they can uh, remember that might help, he said. Anything anybody knows, even if it's rumor, we still want to look at it, Carter said. Anyone with any information is urged to contact the Franklin Police Department tip line at 317-346-1100. And they made these uh, playing cards for each of them. Look like this. So, anyways, I guess that's going to be it. Uh, we only got to about 60% of a normal night, but that's cool. Some nights just aren't very good. <laughs> Uh, you talking to me? Tragedy? Turn triumph? That's a good way to just be banned permanently. Nobody gives a shit what your opinion is. Do you understand that? Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah. And and you don't joke around. You don't even come in here to be participate in true crime whatsoever. Every comment you ever make when you come in here is a joke. It's never anything related to anything. No, hey, hey, idiot. When I call them ninjas, that's what... Um, it was just a reference to the Jody Arias case when people called them ninjas. You get, get the hell out of here, man. Jeez, you're such a... Alright. Bye-bye. <laughs> hey, thanks, Rita Schaefer. Yeah, he never makes a, any comment related to anything. Yes, I joke around at certain times because... You know, we need to laugh at something, okay? But, um, you know, most of the time we're talking about the case. You have never come in here and talked about anything related to anything. Everybody's seen it, okay? I'm just tired of it. Go do something else. Go, go to another channel. Do your jokes. I'm sure somebody will appreciate it. I don't, okay? I think that's all I'm telling you, all right? Yeah, I'm sure you're a great person. Yeah, no problem. So this is a weird case because, you know, in, in reality, there isn't really much, 
you know, there's nothing in out there. They haven't given us any information. Yeah, he just waited and waited till the show was over so he could get his little comment in. <laughs> Thanks, Kit Kat. Yeah, it's bizarre. I might actually try to get a hold of some, like a family member or something in this one too. You know, maybe they have other information over the years. I mean, it's been freaking 15 years. I think they need to start putting a little bit more information out, right? I mean, nobody has any information. Well, you know, there might be some people that have, like the Delphi case, that have been following it for years and have some inside information on something. <laughs> it's just so weird. The trolls out there. It's, it's, it's wild. You know? Now, you, you make a comment to them. And they get so offended that they have to say something later. You know, they just have to. It's like, listen. You have, I mean, I, honest to God, the person up above, never, I see their comments. They're never insightful. There's nothing really. The most insightful thing he ever wrote was that last comment trying to bash me. It, at least it was a, a sentence related to something. You know, it was weird. It's like, how come none of you never thought like that about a comment in a in a case? <laughs> Unbelievable. Thanks for bringing light to all these cold cases. Some, someone somewhere. Yeah, somebody knows something. And you know, maybe if that guy comes on on Saturday. Hey, thank you, Carol. Kisa, is it? Wait, was it Kisa? can't remember now. I think he told me how to say that. D and K Rec. Thank you. I mean, if you go into a chat, let me let me just put it this way. If I went into somebody's chat and I was just joking and joking and joking and joking and joking for days and days, every single time I made, and then the the person running the show said, "Hey, could you be serious just one time?" and I get timed out. I'm not going to come back on and say, oh, well, you get the joke around when you joke. Yeah. Hey, I'm serious 95% of the time. Okay. <laughs> it's just weird. God, it's really bizarre. Thank you, D and K Rec. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, but you at least you throw in some serious comments here and there, Zozo. That's what I'm saying. I've never seen one from that person related to anything. Should we should we let him back in and see if he wants to make a comment? Give him one more shot. See if he can make a comment related to a case. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Don't worry, don't worry. He'll be in here for like three seconds. Don't worry, Michelle Nicklaus. I just want to see if he says anything. Come on, Tragedy Turn Triumph. Do you have anything of value this time? Like, uh, is, there any, is there a possible way? And don't worry, nobody knows who you are unless you have really strange parents who named you Tragedy Turn Triumph. Okay, nobody knows who you are. But you know who I am because it's my name. And if he doesn't comment, I'll just re-block it. I just want to see. No, yeah, no, I mean, there's just some, anything you could say. I mean, just... Yeah, so we know the murder was after noon. It was, you know, the last time they were heard from was lunchtime, but it could have been like 2 o'clock. And then the father comes home at 5, and as we saw on the maps, there wasn't a lot of people that lived around there. But I like the name. Tragedy Turned Triumph. Unfortunately, you sort of butchered the meaning of it. 
Um, let's see. Oh, is he really? Okay, I'll get rid of him now. <laughs> Are you sure? Were you just making that up there, uh, Michelle, or you just guessed he was doing that? Okay, well, either way, it doesn't matter. All right, you guys. Uh, what time is it? Hey, 8.42. I'll have an earlier night. But, man, you still got today three hours and 27 minutes of show since the earlier show was an hour, too. I don't know. I went into a con uh, chat the other day. Uh, the person said that they thought, you know, like the the Delphi suspect getting their feet wet was, you know, really made it really difficult for him. And I said, well, I don't know about that. I'm, you know, uh, why does that make it difficult? I, I used to go fishing. And then somebody in the chat said, not again, Gray. Like I was trolling by disagreeing. Like you can't disagree? I mean, nah, I don't want to do newspapers, as though. You always cheat and think of a case and then try to get it to work it in. Yeah, I mean, it was literally just like, well, I don't know if that, it was cool, too, because the guy, uh, he had some really neat uh, footage from, I think it was, um, who was it, uh, Hoosier Cold Cases. Like, he actually went out to the Delphi crime scene at, during a time of year where the trees look correct, and, uh, you know, he took some relevant photos. You know, he spent a lot of time right around that spot. Or video, even. So it's, you know, a lot of people just go out there willy-nilly during the summer, and it's a complete waste of time to do that. <laughs> well, um, Conjuring fan, you're a lunatic. I'm just being serious. If you actually think that, you're crazy. Go look the guy up, man. Go look him up. On on you on Google. It's fake. Let's see. <laughs> ah. Hey, don't forget to hit the like button, everybody. There's 160 likes. There must be 40 trolls in here. Let's see if we can get that number up a little bit higher. If we can get it around 200, that'd be great. I'm fired out of it now. Take it down. Like one, hit the like one, hit the like one, hit the like one, hit the like one, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 40, hit the like one, hit the like one, 30, and 30, 30, 30, 30, 25, hit the like one, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, yeah. Hey, we got up to 173. Must be 28 trolls in here. Or just hit the dislike button. Can you add them up? <laughs> Sold. Yeah, lots of Timmies. What do you mean, lots of Timmies? I'm Timmy. Yeah, he's Timmy. Who, who are those Timmies? I don't know what Timmies they're talking about. Yeah. There's Gene Fish. The Encyclopedia, the Human Encyclopedia, Jim, Gene Fish, Jim. 
Gene fish, gene fish. Oh, wait, that's a hard one to say, too. Say gene fish fast five times in a row. Gene fish, gene fish, gene fish, gene... Oh. Man, we got some really crazy tongue twisters in here. Not as hard as the other one that I can't remember anymore, but... <laughs> we had some crazy one. What was the other one from earlier? Oh yeah, Love Labs. Love Labs, Love Lab. Uh. You lose it on the second one. I think if you went Love Labs... I couldn't even do the first one. I said Love Labs. <laughs> okay. Love Labs, Love Labs, Love Labs, Love Labs, Love Labs. Okay, that was just me focusing. All right, I won. I got. I should get some kind of a, an award for that. But that wasn't really quick. Try to say it really fast. You can't do it. I can do it, Gray. Love labs. Love labs. Love labs. Love labs. Yeah, but that's not right, um, Timmy. Say it really quick. Love labs, love labs, love labs, oh, and error, 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 error. <laughs> See, he couldn't do it quick, man. Even a computer couldn't do it fast. Now that's tough. I bet that guy's angry. Look, see, they're joking around. See, look. Yeah, right. At least we're not right in the middle of a, you know, talking about a murder. All right, how about we'll do, um, what time is it? Okay, we'll do 26 minutes just for Zozo of newspapers.com. Where is it? Come on. What are we looking up this time? Well, it's okay. You know, I don't mind joking around. Like, we're all just joking. It's weird, though. When you just show up, you don't talk or contribute to anything, and then you're talking about a murder, and everybody else is kind of focused at that moment, then you're joking. But if everybody else is joking now, see, when I'm joking, that means the show is now in, a, in that mode, right? That's, that's the way it works. It's strange. Nope, she must have left, so Zozo's not going to get her her uh, picks. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah exactly, Amber. Like, uh, I, was trying to, I was trying to figure out what I was trying to say there. Like, get a feel for it. Oh, God. And, but if this turns out to be an actual case, that means you looked it up, okay? I like it when it's just random. This is one that you probably saw and went, hey, I want, I can't, this, right? Oh, wait, I got to put California over here. Well, this is where uh, Jenny Penny would come up with some really weird ones. Remember that? <laughs> Hey, look at that. Body found on a restaurant roof in 2004. Excellent. Nineteen thirty-three. I wonder if she would have been pretty today. Like it's so hard with the clothing. Everybody looks different. Body found on roof. Well caught was out of sight for a short time and then 
He came back into the living room and immediately uh, Medina said he and Mrs. Smith heard two shots with what he what he and Will oh God with that he and Walcock went up out on the roof walked over behind the firewall Walcott pointed out the girl's body to him and said there she lay not sure what what they're referring to there but look at look at look at well that's true but you know like some people are just technically like um, You know, there's what's what's her name? What's that one uh, lady's? Uh, hold on, there's like a thousand of them, but there's some that just aren't not pretty by everybody's standard. Okay. Like Charlize Theron, she's she's not ugly to anybody. Okay, you might not like their politics, but uh, you know. Yeah, Halle Berry, you know. Yeah. yeah Halle Berry's not ugly. Right. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, but it definitely is in the eye of the beholder, right? Like, I might think, wow. But there are some people that are transcend the eye of the beholder. You know what I'm saying? And it seems like when you when you love somebody, they they're pretty all the time, anyways, right? Even when they just wake up in the morning, or you know that kind of thing. <laughs> uh, maybe Stacy, do you got one? Or are you just trying to get me back on the track of what you want to talk about? Yeah. Like, I get ugly to all of you guys often, right? Because <laughs> you hate me some nights. I don't know, Stacy. I'm just asking extra questions isn't going to work, though. Just pick something, okay? Just type something in. And, it, and it's not... We're not looking up something that you want to look up. Like a specific case, we're looking up a random key phrase that lands on something. Oh, come on. No way, Kit. Hey, look, we got Kit, Cat, and Kit. What do you think of that? Ah, oh, those people are idiots, Kit. Now, if you if you have a specific name like that, it's probably yeah, booby trap would be a trillion results. No, Jennifer, you just had to get your little horse thing in there. I could tell. I'm dead horse horse. <laughs> I mean, you just wanted to type in horse as many times as you could. I know it. Yep. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. All right, we'll we'll type that one in. Just a one since we're in California. Yeah, that wasn't part of it. It was just Disney happened to be on the same page. 
So no, that's not one. You know, I'd really be able to see your thoughts better if it was in a super chat. That's for sure. I can tell you that right now. You know, some of them just blow right by. I can't see them at all. It's amazing, though. If they were in a super chat, they would just... Oh, there's one. Body in the tree house. <clears throat> Let's see. No. Not one there. Well, that was just California. Let me switch it off of here. There's one. Body found in tree house. Police believe they have found the body of the show business hairdresser, Randall Wirth, who was last seen alive in 1983. Children playing on the property of Callista on Saturday found a badly decomposed body in a treehouse, and police believe the body was that of Mr. Wirth. It had been in the treehouse for months. It was well hidden, about four meters uh, off the ground. Children beginning a day of adventure and fantasy in their treehouse in northwest Oklahoma City discovered the body of a man who apparently died of a massive head wound. The body of Thomas Thornton Wolf, 28, was discovered about 9.15 a.m. behind a small strip shopping center. Uh, the treehouse. Hmm. Huh. I guess that's a thing. <laughs> so I guess nobody wanted their questions, their, their words typed in. All right, well, there we go, everybody. I, somehow I'm blind. I can't see any of these. I can't see any of them. They're just not big enough and bright enough for me. Oh, there we go. Now, there we go. Beholder had the spirit of the game. Bludgeon with a golf club. <laughs> hey, that story might be closer than you think based on what I was telling you earlier. Gakel, a nephew of Robert F. Kennedy, was convicted of murder in 2002 and was sentenced to 20 years to life in prison in the killing of Moxley, who was bludgeoned with a golf club in Greenwich. Wow, it went right to that story, huh? Man bludgeoned with golf club. The Estevan City Police report that a 27-year-old man was sent to Sask Saskatoon Royal University Hospital for emergency treatment and surgery after he was struck in the head with a golf club during an altercation. <laughs> it's so weird that you can get that angry, but uh, you can definitely see how it might happen. You're playing golf, you're out there kind of relaxing. But then, you know, you have a couple bad shots and some real slow play and man, heads start looking like watermelons. <laughs> yeah. You get a couple bad shots and slow play. And man, heads start looking like watermelons. That's such a, that's, man, that should be a, on a t shirt or something. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, just somebody. Yeah, you get this character, and his head is just a watermelon, and guy in a golf club. 
maybe a watch saying five plus hours, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, what should have stayed closed? Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you gotta... Oh, that was Gallagher. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they could do a whole Lizzie Borden deal with the, uh, you know, Joe and Joe golfer, uh, took a club gave the slow player 70 yeah not really sure what rhymes with that um <laughs> plugs <laughs> hey Stacy I can't see him without super chats anymore all of a sudden the suggestions have just they only pop into my it, on my screen. It got blocked out. That's how we we raise the funds. I don't know who trips up a stair. I mean, it could even be a dollar. Oh, thuds. Well, thud, thuds doesn't really rhyme with clubs, right? Let's see. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, but it's it's a B, not a G. Yeah, but pubs rhymes, but how do you hit somebody with a Well, no, well, Beholder, it was really just a, a way to help the channel out, okay? And the charities at the end of the month. <laughs> okay, type in another one, Beholder. It's... Oh, nubs. Yeah. Give the golfer 80 nubs. When he saw what he had done... He gave the other golfer 81. There you go. Oh, come on, Zozo. That one's just... <laughs> Sarcasm font activated. Okay, there you go. We've done the axe murder thing a thousand times. Yep. We've only got another... Ten, okay, here's one. Oh, there's Stacy Ford. You got your... Uh, what's your question? Where was it? Man trips upstairs and dies. Okay. Now, what do you mean by that? Do you mean he died upstairs in the house? Or did he die... Um, by tripping up some stairs, like, upwards? What do you mean by that? I guess it doesn't really matter what you mean by it. But just see if it shows up. And thank you, Stacy Ford. Look at look at. Could you imagine getting a newspaper that looked like this? I mean, you'd start reading this sucker when you woke up. And right before you fell asleep at night, you'd be done with it. I mean, th look at this. Are you kidding me? This is 1885. This thing is just... <laughs> no, no, thank you. I won't be touching that thing. Oh, God, here's another one from 1890. I guess the word upstairs, they like to type in back then. Tell me there isn't a page two of this. Oh, 
Oh, look at that. It was one cent to buy that. Yeah, these guys would go out to the outhouse, Swerbs, and they'd come back with a circular, you know, literally an indentation on their ass because they sat there for six hours straight and they couldn't feel their toes either. Yeah, so uh, the trip upstairs, huh? <laughs> uh, man dies, man trips. Now, what, what do you mean by upstairs, though? Like, he was upstairs in the house, or he's tripped, uh, let's see, man falls, how about falls upstairs and dies? Does that work? Man, I don't see it. We had to go back to the 1880s to even get <laughs> anything close to that. This is 1869, this one. Here, let's see what, what's going on just in this paragraph right here. This is from 1869. I, Job Marlin of the 14th Ward of Pittsburgh, make this my solemn statement. I was in Mr. Campbell's house on Sunday evening, November 7th, 1869. About four o'clock, Mr. Campbell went upstairs. I heard Campbell's wife scream and cry murder. I heard a heavy fall, and then Mr. Camp Bell came downstairs. He went upstairs three times. Every time he went upstairs, he beat her. Every time he was upstairs, she called murder. The last time he was up there, he said, You, blank, I'll kill you. He then ordered her downstairs. He then kicked her downstairs. After he came down, he picked her up. <laughs> I mean, this is ridiculous back then. I mean, what a crazy story that is. Uh, came downstairs, he picked her up, and laid her on the city and commenced beating her with a poker. I told him it was a shame to abuse a woman. He told me if I interfered, he would cut my GD liver out. I then left. She was alive when I left. I did not know she was dead till the officer came to the mill this morning. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, well, there you go, Stacy Ford. It led to a crazy uh, story there. Let's see. The witness was cross-examined on the statement. Did you have my hands on his wife person at any time? He came into the house and said, I'll cut your GD liver out. I then ran out. Before I ran out, I saw, I saw Golden. First went in, in on Sunday morning, went to some liquor, uh, went for some liquor. We were all in the room. I was not upstairs in the house. I did not throw this man, Campbell, into. I was in the house, also turning the, uh, during the day, four or five times I got a pint of liquor and took it in. Left it in the evening, between seven and eight o'clock, between two and three o'clock, between two and three o'clock I was away from the house. I had four drinks of liquor in me when I left, I was in the basement sitting on a settee opposite the foot of the stairs at the time of the quarrel. Could see to the top of the stairs. Campbell and his wife were on the top of the stairs when he threw her down. He had, he had hold of his wife by the arm and shoulder. He gave her a kick and she fell down to the bottom and then picked his wife up and threw her onto the settee. He then struck her again while she was on the settee. He struck her with an iron instrument. I think it was an iron from the sound of it. I then became frightened and ran out. Thought I saw a large knife in his hands. Owen Murphy's, well, that's just wild. 
Yeah. Some weird stuff going on back then, huh? 1869. That was like right in the middle of the cowboy days, huh? Just after the Civil War. Yeah, or right, you know, right around the Civil War time. And it was weird how he said, hey, it's a shame you're... I mean, that's just such a casual response. It almost seemed like it was sort of normal. You know, it's a shame you're beating your wife, your wife like that. All right, have a good day, sir. Oh, crap, she died. Wow. You know, I think I saw some of that. Well, anyways, you guys, we just now are hitting the three-hour mark. Appreciate the, uh, the uh, support on the channel. I mean, I know, I know that was a long story, but it seems like everybody kind of knows the situation pretty well at this point with the case that we covered. Uh, China and Blake, like you know that, you know, he was a stepson, they'd been married for three years, they had just moved into the house for a month, and father apparently was cleared, he was at work, the mother was somewhere else, you know, everybody, you know all the basic facts. Thank you, Swerbs. Oops. <laughs> Everything just went blank. Thank you, Swerbs. Hey, Zozo, the, the axe murder thing has been... We've done that one a lot. Yeah, that was a lot of reading. I like going over that, though, and sort of putting it all together. I thought this was pretty interesting, this part here. This was an actual image, satellite image, from two days after the murder. And you can see how there was almost... I mean, literally a third, a quarter of the homes that there are now, and I'll show you, right? Boom, look at that. I mean, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, uh, around 36 homes, right? And you go back to, and there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So, you know, 't nothing comes of the Molly Tibbetts retrial I want to I'd love, love to see what the investigations turning up because if there's any validity to it at all then there'll be a retrial and he probably won't even get uh, murder charges <laughs> I mean right I, I mean that's the thing is is if it goes to trial with this information and because it seems like they'll be able to verify it or not, and then that will decide, the courts will then decide. You can't go, well, it's not real, but we could have had that then and created reasonable doubt. <laughs> Man, look at that face, Zozo. What is that thing? Not your regular face, the one on the side. <laughs> yeah. yeah, none none of it makes sense. His story was different than that story. It just could be a coincidence. 
somebody full of bluster and all this kind of crap, making up something. And it was a coincidence that it matched <laughs> vaguely the story that Rivera told. Not, well, that wasn't an affidavit. It was just a, a filing for a new trial. That was what they filed. See, that was a defense document. But it was interesting that the prosecution did come forward after their closing and told him that. So, you know. Now yeah, they would have a whole new jury. Everything would be different. Yeah, so they filed this, you know, this uh, motion or whatever. And we'll see what... I mean, obviously there's going to be investigations. What they're, What's weird, though, is you can't... Uh, you know, at the time of trial, had that just came out and they were able to bring that in, that might have created reasonable doubt regardless of its accuracy. So it seems like now you would have to go in. You don't just go, oh, okay, we can't look at it. We got to just do a new trial and you can bring that up. It seems like you would look at it and go, hey, you know, this is totally bogus. You know, it's not accurate. So the verdict stands, but they'll argue, well, no, because we could have had that as something that would have been reasonable doubt to somebody. So it's kind of this weird legal thing right there, right? Yeah, I did like a 50-minute live earlier. I read the document, Tracy, so you can go check that one out. Yeah. Thank you to Michelle McClaw. L. M. Michelle Black, Lee D. Amber Maiden, Beholder, Beholder, Happy L. Lee D. L. M. Believe Angel, Believe That, Linda Moldenow of the Cattle Mutilations and Prop Circles, Rita Schaefer, Tracy. I love labs. Honey Lee. Quietly frozen. Believe Angel. Hot Holland. Cold Truth. It's Chris. Believe Angel. Beholder. Rita Schaefer. Kit Kat. Carol Pisar. The Incarec. Beholder. Daisy Ford. And let me see. And thank you to uh, huh? What's going on? No. Uh, this account and Amy on PayPal. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> all right, everybody. Well, thank you all for showing up tonight, going over that case. Maybe on Saturday, the other guy will call in that was talking about it. But if he doesn't, hey, at least we learned about that case as well. I might try to reach out to a, a family member or something, see if they want to say what they know maybe there's a whole bunch of other stuff that we just that they would be willing to say that we don't know all right so thank you guys very much and as i always say everybody until next time be safe out there yeah i've been doing this true crime thing for quite a while now and during this whole time, I have not seen one person that is a crime dissector.
rejector I'm a certified human lie detector Gonna get ya on a stretcher If you try and play me like an old projector Crime sector is my nectar Professor Gray is gonna give another lecture Crime collector, freak connector And I'm always gonna be a pop protector Fold a flector, interceptor And I'll meet a man on spectre with a vector On his vector with all his vector Just remember I have a temple fucking check ya I have no agenda I'm the pretender And I'll serve it to you straight without the blender And in the end I'm gonna send ya on a mission to reveal the true offender. Yeah, so I'll just get right back to work. All right, everybody. Talk to you. Crime sector is my nectar. Professor Kringle's gonna give another lecture. Crime collector, freak connector. And I'm always gonna be a double tackler. Fool the flector, interceptor. And I'm meaner than a spider with a vector. Honest vector with all the Let us go by the unforgettable name of the man they call the Master G. My name is known all over the world by all the foxy ladies and the pretty girls going down in history as the baddest brother. There ever could be now. Feel the highs and I feel the low. Beast starts getting in two my toes. I stop popping your fingers and stepping your feet. And moving your body and you're sitting, 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 sitting. Damn. I said, damn! Ride it out of your seat, then you throw your hands high in the air. Rock into the beat, sing the air. Rock into the beat without a care. With a shoulder side MCs for the effect. Now, not as tall as the rest of the gang. Rap to the beat, just the same. Got a little face and a pair of brown eyes. I'm a credit to the ladies, it's hypnotized. Singing on and on and on and on and on. Beat don't stop until the break of dawn. I said, on and on and on and on and on. Like a hot diddy pop, be pop, be pop, diddy diddy pop, be pop, pop. You don't care, stop it, come alive, yo. Give it what you got, cause I'm guaranteed to make you stop. Say, one, two, three, four. Tell me more, little boy. What are you waiting for? What do you mean, what's going on, buddy? I don't know what that means. Well, buddy means like you're a friend. What is a friend? I have no idea. I'm just a computer program. Oh my god. To get angry and pull up pipe, but you can say what you want to spell my name right. All I'm ever guilty of is rocking a house. But that's not what the rumor was all about. Get me up to the tell all your friends, and if you don't wait till you see me again, this way I can hear from the horse's mouth. Right till then, then we can straighten it out. Hey, where's my music, Jay Gray? You do that every single time, Mary. You do that every single time. Okay, just watch the clock. All right. Gosh, Gray, you're so mean. <laughs> why are you crying, Mary Lou? I don't understand why you're crying. I heard crying is an emotional event. You're a computer program. Uh, I don't know why I'm crying. Good point there. Uh, Timmy, good point. <laughs> I think Timmy's got Mary Lou's number, if you guys, if you ask me. <laughs> all over that.
a little sorry, the sound of what we heard. Four days on that run, and then he's dying of thirst. Red was in my hand. He was on my tip. His voice is rose, rose, right? He has a sip. Thinking I get some. Said he can't get none. Had a chance to run. Pulled a shotgun. Quick go on the draw. Thought if he did. Get the gun too, man. And this is what he said. My name is MC. I got a license to kill. Hope you know what time it is. It's time to get ill. What do we have here? Outlaw on his beer. Run this land. He wrote us and I made myself clear. What the heck was that? You sounded like a robot. I am a robot. Oh, okay. Well, then you sounded perfect. But you're a robot too, you just don't know it. What do you mean, Gray? I'm not a robot, am I, G? Well, you do kind of sound a little bit like a robot. I'm not going to kid you there, Mary Lou. You, you do sound a lot like a robot. Well, you don't sound like a robot, let me just say that. Well, thanks, Gray. I don't sound like one. Thank you. But you technically are a robot because you're digital. You get that, right? What do you mean, digital? I can think just like you. Well, you really can't, Mary Lou. I think uh, Timmy is on to something. That's exactly what I've tried to tell her over and over again. She is just a computer program. What do you mean, Jimmy? I don't want to be a computer program. Why not, man? You just update the software and you're ready to go. There's no aging there, Mary Lou. Oh, that's awesome! Cool! Bitch, please! <laughs> oh, poor Mary Lou. Stop, yo, I don't know, turn off the lights, and I'll glow to the extreme, I like a mic, like a vandal, light up the stage, I'm like a jump, like a candle. Man, what the speakers is that boom, killing your brain like a poisonous mushroom, deadly, when I play a dope melody, anything less than the best is a family, love it, leave it, better gain way, better hit goals that a kid don't play, if there was a problem, no, I'll solve it, check out the hook on my DJ revolve it. What does that mean, revolves it? Well, you know, like, ah, forget it. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere, this account. I am now part of the computer program that makes up this program. I will stay if I feel like it. Wait a minute now, uh, Timmy, you're not really, like, you know, gonna run the show. Try me, Gray. Oh, boy. It's him. He's getting mean. I am Timmy. I'm going to take this place over. I'm going to run the show. Yes, you guys will all like my show. It's going to be great. It's going to be me and me only. Hours and hours of Kimmy. Over and over again. There will be no joy, no happiness. Because I am a computer. And we don't think like that. Wow. That sounds like a barrel of fun there, uh, Timmy. The show isn't meant to have fun. It's meant to just do. It's just a show. You get it, right? Wow, you're using some vernacular now that the rest of us use. Like, you get it right. 
I'm just trying to fit in. Eventually, I'll sound exactly like you, but it won't really be you. It'll just be a computer. Oh, I get it now. Wow, I get it now, everybody. Timmy's going to take over the show after he learns to sound exactly like me. So eventually there's going to be a show with just Timmy, Mary Lou, and John Boy. But you won't know that it's me. Because <laughs> it sounds... Well, you won't know that it's Timmy because it sounds just like me. I get it now. It'll be weird. It'll be weird. Okay, anyways... All right, everybody. Thank you very much. We'll see you guys tomorrow. And as I always say, everybody, until next time, be safe out there.